Hi, my name is Allie and I'm with the Pilates Rx. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and a nationally certified Pilates instructor. Today's program is going to be a gentle movement-based program on managing lower back pain. Uh, especially if you're you know, working from home right now, you've been experiencing some lower back pain, I hope that this class can provide you some relief. Um, that being said, there are a number of different stretches in this class and I'll provide some modifications. If a stretch or an exercise does not feel right for your body, please take a modification or please just take a, a quick rest. The point of this class is for you to feel good, so I encourage you to listen to your body. That being said, you don't need any props for today, just a mat to lie down. Um, if you know you have any knee or neck sensitivity, you may wanna have a small pillow nearby, but that's totally optional. So to get started, we're gonna lie down on your backs. Now, sometimes when you lie down, if you have your legs flat all the way, that can feel like a lot of pressure on your lower back. So you can go ahead and bend your knees or have them extended, whatever is comfortable. And just take a moment to melt down onto the mat. So before we start to move, I'd like you to get connected with your body. And notice how your body feels on the mat today, right in this moment. Scanning from the very top of your head down to your toes. Just noticing any differences from side to side, noticing any spots of tension, and just notice them. There's really no right or wrong. Just take a moment to notice. And as you get tuned in with your body on the mat today, start to see if you can imagine your breath and where your breath is going. And as you imagine your breath, visualize it filling up your rib cage and inflating it like a balloon. And as you exhale, feeling some of that still air deep in our lungs, exit the body. Now we focus on breathing early in class because our breath is actually really important for lower back pain management. So sometimes our breath is up high in our shoulders. Sometimes it's down low in our belly. It can even be wide out to the side in our rib cage. So as you practice this breath, I encourage you to try and send your breath down a little bit lower. That breathing pattern up high in our shoulders, that's a breathing pattern called accessory breathing, and we use that only in times of exertion. But sometimes if we've been sitting with bad posture, our body finds that as the easiest place to breathe. So focus here on sending that breath down lower into your belly, expanding your rib cage wide out to the side, and hopefully you find that as you find that expansion, some of the muscles in your lower back will actually start to relax. And you may even feel some of your core muscles start to kick on. So we'll take one more deep breath like that and letting it all go. And then setting up for our first bit of movement. So if your legs were flat, go ahead and bend them. And we're gonna start with some gentle pelvic rocking. So you're gonna tip your tailbone towards your face and then let it go and unravel. So gently rocking your pelvis front to back. Now, if this is the first movement you're doing today, your back might be a little bit stiff and that's okay. Just work within your back's comfortable range of motion and just gently think about closing the space under your low back and then opening up that space. Closing the space under your low back and then opening. And as you start to move here, I think you'll find that range of motion gets a little bit bigger and maybe a little bit easier to move. Again, it should be comfortable. Just work within your body for now. We'll try three more. Last two. One more time and settle somewhere right in the middle. From here, walk your feet together and knees together. Allow your arms to rest down by your side and very gently start to rock your knees from side to side. So as you rock, you're only allowing your legs to go as far as you can without any stress or strain to your lower back. And that might be different from side to side. That's okay, just notice it. It's okay for your hips to lift in this uh, exercise, but I want you to keep your shoulders down. So we're just allowing that motion to open up a little bit, introducing some rotation into our lower back. 
We'll try three more like this. Last two. Good, guys. One more time here and then settle somewhere right in the middle. From here, you're gonna separate your feet back to about hips distance apart. But this time, walk your feet in close enough so that you can tap your heels with your fingertips. We're gonna set up for our first strengthening exercise of the day. And this strengthening exercise is for our glutes, our hip muscles. They provide a really important strength uh, support for our spine when we're walking, when we're bending over, when we're lifting things, and certainly when we're going up and down stairs. So from here, we're gonna press our arms down into the floor, lift the hips up to the ceiling and pause. Holding this position, draw the front of your rib cage down, lengthen your tailbone towards your toes. If you feel pressure in your lower back, drop your ribs down even a little bit more. Bring your hands to your butt muscles. Make sure that they're working. It should not be your low back doing this movement. It should be your glutes. Now you have the option to just hold this. Otherwise, we're gonna start to lower the hips and lift. Lower the hips and lift. As you lift and lower, you're keeping this relatively flat back position as though you're hinging from your hips down and lifting. So you can imagine your hip joint like a hinge door, dropping down, lifting back up. We go for four and three, last two, last time. Lift the hips up, drop down, and take a little rest. Beautiful. From here, we just work to stabilize our spine from the back side of our body. We're now gonna work into the front side of our body, so our core. So finding our core muscles, we're going to bend the right knee in towards our chest and gently hug that knee in. It shouldn't feel like a pinching, it shouldn't be stressful. We're just gently holding that right knee and then stretching the left leg out long. Now, if this feels like pressure on your spine, you lift the left leg up a little bit higher. If it feels really easy, you lower that left leg down. From here, we switch the legs. Notice I'm keeping my head down. I'm keeping my trunk and my back totally still. So I want you guys to imagine as you switch your legs that you could balance a teacup right on your stomach. And you're keeping that teacup nice and steady despite your legs moving here. We're also enjoying the benefit of a nice little hip stretch. Now you can always stay with this exercise, but if you wanted to progress, you're gonna stretch the right leg straight, hold up as high as you can on that right leg, left leg is out long, and you scissor the legs to switch. So now we get a little deeper stretch into our hamstring muscle, finding the length of reaching the opposite leg away, but we're still balancing that teacup on our core. We go for four, three, two, last time, bend both knees in towards our chest, give ourselves a gentle hug here, massaging out the lower back, and then rock yourself on up to a seated position. Good, from here, reach your hands about six to uh, 12 inches behind your bottom and press your chest open tall. So I'm using the pressure of my hands to push my heart open and then I'm gonna cross my left ankle on top of my right thigh. Now this should feel like a stretch in the outside of my right hip. If it's too much, I'm gonna straighten my right leg. If I feel like I want a deeper stretch, I'm gonna bend my right leg in. So you can move that around until you find the sweet spot of where you get a stretch, but not a strain, pinching, or pain. And from there, you're gonna keep pushing your chest open to keep the rest of your spine nice and long. Now the reason we're stretching our hips is because our hips move so closely with our back. And so the more flexibility we have in our hips, the less stress our lower back feels when we do certain movements. We're gonna hold this for just another moment and then carefully slide the right leg out, planting our left foot down on the floor. We're gonna add a spine twist. So the outside of my right hand comes to the outside of my uh, left thigh, and then I open up my arms. Now in the spine twist, it's easy to get slumpy. I want you guys to keep the spine tall and lifted, even if that means you can't twist quite as far. We'll take one more deep breath here, 
and then we'll come back to the center. We'll set up for the second side. So this time, right ankle on the left thigh, press your chest open, move your leg around to find that sweet spot of strength, uh, of stretch without a strain, and just hold and breathe. Know that your two sides might be quite different and that's okay, just notice it. Find the stretch that's appropriate for that side. And we're feeling a nice lengthening of the outside of our right hip here. And we'll take one more deep breath and then slide the right leg, uh, the left leg long and plant your right foot down. We're gonna go for that spine twist. So you're facing the right side, opening up. You can still use your right hand pushing on the floor to keep your chest up nice and tall. And just breathe in this position. Imagine the top of your head getting pulled up towards the ceiling. We'll take one more big breath here and then unravel. We're gonna flip on over to an all fours position next. So finding that all four setup, hands are gonna go directly underneath your shoulders, knees directly underneath your hips. If you have wrist sensitivity, you can lower onto your forearms. If you have knee sensitivity, go ahead and roll up your mat a couple of times to give yourself a little bit of extra padding. From here, we're gonna go through a cat-cow. So we're gently rounding our spine and extending our spine. And I want you to work within your spine's comfortable range of motion. Again, everyone's spine looks different. It's okay if your movement is really small, just explore what your spine is able to do. So we're gonna try just a few more here, but imagine creating that movement from your ribs, like you're lifting your ribs up and you're dropping your ribs down. We'll try three more, two more, and last time, and then we'll settle somewhere right in the middle. From here, we're gonna try another little balance exercise. So imagine keeping your navel pointing down towards the floor. So the way you are right now, it's nice and centered, but we wanna keep it there as we reach our right arm forward, left leg back behind us. Reach the fingertips and toes so far away from one another that your whole spine grows an extra inch. We hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And we set up for our second side. So find that flat back position. You've got a nice flat upper back, maybe leaving a small curve in our low spine. And then we reach our left arm out, right leg back behind and we hold. Reach long, soft bend in your right elbow. We go for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, lower all the way back down. Beautiful. So we're gonna stay in this all fours for one more stretch, this time for our upper back. So this is a rotation, but for our upper back. So from here, you're gonna lift the right arm up to the ceiling, and then dive your right arm underneath your left arm, bending your left elbow to let your head and shoulder rest down. Again, we open up the right arm and then reach it underneath the left. So I call this stretch threading the needle. You can imagine using your right hand to thread a needle between your left arm and the floor. We'll do two more. And this is a stretch for our upper back. Good, and one more time here. So we did rotation for our lower back earlier in class. This is now rotation for our upper back. And then stretch on up, good. We'll do the other side. So plant your right hand down, reach your left arm up to the ceiling, and then thread it underneath your right. If you have any shoulder sensitivity, you can still do this stretch, just keeping your elbow bent. It's a stretch for our upper back. So really the shoulder piece is just an added movement. You don't have to have a big range of motion with your arm to get a big stretch. And keep in mind, you'll probably have quite a difference from side to side here as well. That's okay, we do have a dominant arm that tends to be a little bit more flexible. One more time here. And then we'll come right back to the middle. From here, we're gonna walk our arms forward and lie down onto our stomachs. Now, when you lie down, sometimes this also feels like a lot of pressure in our lower back. So you can add a pillow underneath your hips if needed. 
And the reason being is that being on our stomach is a position of extension, especially considering we spend a lot of time spent um, sitting, sort of bent over and rounded forward in flexion. So just by being in this position, it can be a little bit stressful or even a stretch for our backs. If you still feel pressure in your back, separate your feet a little bit wider than the mat. We're gonna plant our hands under our shoulders and start to press to lift up our spine. So you can start slow here, maybe just lifting your upper back. If you can tolerate it, go ahead and press up, lifting into your lower back as well. And most of the weight should be in your arms. This is meant to be uh, a stretch for your back, so you wanna allow your back to relax a little bit here. Now, if you feel that pressure pinching in your low back, make your range of motion a little bit smaller. Keep your feet down on the floor. This is one of my favorite stretches for the low back because it gives you uh, the opposite position and the opposite posture of how we spend most of our day. So if you only had a minute or two, this is a really good bang for your back to get a nice big stretch in in a short period of time. We'll try two more. And last time, you're gonna press yourself up and all the way back, this time sitting back on your heels and reaching your fingertips forward to find a shell stretch or child's pose. In this position, if you can't sit all the way back because of knee or hip tightness, that's okay. You still get the benefit of the stretch through your lower back. So just take a deep breath here and let it go. And then come on up to a seated position. Good. Okay, so um, we have stretched our spine forward, we've stretched backwards, and we've rotated the spine. The last spinal movement we have not explored yet is bending sideways. So thinking of our spine like a windmill. So to do so, we're gonna sit down on our left hip with our legs out to the side to the right. If this is too much for your hips or your knees, you can always straighten your legs. You can sit with a diamond in front of you. You can even sit on a pillow. But if you can tolerate this leg position, give it a try. You're gonna open up your arms, find the widest wingspan you've ever had, and try and sit that spine up nice and tall. From here, nice and easy, we're just gonna add a gentle wave of the arms up and over, up and over, reaching, finding that nice long side stretch. So you can imagine the sides of your spine like an accordion, like they're opening and closing opening and closing. We'll try three more here. Last two. Last time, you're gonna pause with your left hand down, right arm up. From here, you're gonna rotate that right arm down, tap the floor, and then open it back up to the ceiling. So it's like I'm turning my chest down. You may not even be able to get to the floor, that's okay. Keep pushing your left hand into the floor here to give yourself length. And again, this is another rotation exercise for the upper back. Two more. And one more time here. And then we come on up. Bring your hands behind you. Maybe do a fancy switch of the legs up and over to the other side. So this time we're sitting down on the right hip. Again, we lift our chest tall, open up those arms, find that long wingspan, and we start to dive up and over. As you find this reach, you're doing a nice gentle windmilling motion, allowing your spine to be a little bit free, but work within what's comfortable. Maybe you can't go quite as far to one side, that's okay. We go for four, last three, Good, lift the chest tall for two. And one more time, we spiral, leaving our right hand down, left arm up, and we rotate to reach to the floor and opening back up. So it's as though I'm spiraling my chest down and then opening my chest out to the side. Good, we'll do just four more here. Again, this is upper back rotation for three. Last two. Awesome job here, guys. One more time, open up and come back to center. 
So that's our program for today. It's very brief, I know, um, but I hope that it just gives you a little sense of mobility, flexibility, and strength in your spine, and that it relieves a little bit of lower back pain. Now, this class is not for everyone, and this class is not in absence of getting a full workup with your doctor, but I hope that one or two of the stretches you learned today are things that you can integrate throughout your day. So you don't need to do this whole program every single day, but maybe break up your day and take a few of these stretches. Use them every hour or two just to keep your spine moving. Um, our spines, they actually really like to move if we allow them to move in comfortable ways. So they don't like to sit still all day. So use this to keep your body moving, keep your spine warm, keep it flexible. And I hope to see you guys again. Thanks again. This is Allie with the Pilates RX.